Welcome to No Border Blues with Johnny Bergen and Stephanie Tice, a podcast about international blues artists you should know about and the sometimes surprising hidden blues scenes around the world. Johnny is a Delmark recording artist who regularly tours and collaborates with international blues players. And Stephanie recently produced the No Border Blues Japan CD, the first American compilation of the underground Japanese blues scene. This show is sponsored by Chicago Blues Network, bringing Chicago blues to the world. Now there is need for you standing here and crying. Cause your cry you want is your mind. I'm begging you, I'm begging you, come on in this house. Well, this old house, oh, when you hear me holler, oh, well, yeah, I love you so. Now if I had a million dollars, I'd give you every time Just to hear you call me baby, and one more time I'm begging you, I'm begging you Come on in this house, well this old house when you hear me holler, well, yeah, I love you so. another woman you got yourself another man I'm begging you I'm begging you come on in this house well this old house and when you hear me holler well yeah I love you so Welcome to this edition of No Border Blues. Today, we have a great guest who is based in Helsinki, Finland. His name is Konstantin Kovalev, and he has a new CD that's coming out, Konstantin and the Call Operators. Welcome. Thank you so All much, John right. and Stephanie. It's great to be here. You know, when I first met you in Helsinki at this house party, that had to be about four or five years ago. I, and you, you, you played with, I was playing there with Aki Kumar and That's I right. heard you play. And I, I made a note right then that you were a guitar player to watch. I knew, I knew you would do great things. <laughs> Thanks a lot, man. And I mean, it's great to hear that from you because you're a fantastic musician yourself. And uh, actually, I was uh, really surprised that you called me up on stage because we never met before and you never heard me play. And you were just like that, you know, just... You know, called me up on stage. That was that was awesome. Well, your reputation <laughs> preceded you. <laughs> All right. So, so you're a, you immigrated to Finland from Russia, right? That's right. Yeah. 
And that was about 10 years ago? Yeah, almost 10 years ago. Uh, that was in 2012. And uh, before that, I was living in Moscow for four years. And uh, yeah, I moved to Finland in August 2012. I was uh, 19 years old. First, you know, I was trying to study uh, electronics, but that didn't work out for me. And at the same time, I was trying to get into the music scene. How do you like it in Finland? How did it, how did it work out for you? Well, there's, uh, of course, a lot of things that I do like and some things that I don't. But uh, I think the blues and rhythm and blues scene is really, is really good in Nordic countries, not only in Finland, but also in Sweden and Norway. Mm-hmm. Maybe you have noticed that yourself yeah well the first and, uh, the first blues magazine the oldest blues magazine in the world is swedish and the second oldest is the finland magazine blues news i didn't know that actually wow but uh, there's a lot of uh, festivals and i mean there's uh, some recording studios uh my favorite one is owned by tommy leno who's a great musician well, he owns like a hundred percent analog studio where we did our record, and um, you know, fees for musicians are really good and stuff like that. Yeah, tell so, me a little about yeah. your blues history story and what inspired you to start playing the blues, and um, just a little bit about that journey. I'd really like to hear that. Well, I started playing guitar when I was 10, in the beginning, I was influenced by like classic rock bands and stuff like that and blues rock and my brother used to work in a cd store so he brought a lot of like different cds but most of that was like classic rock like led zeppelin that kind of stuff and then he brought a bb king cd and i heard bb king for the first time when i was 13 and you know that changed my life (laughs) wow just that one hearing of bb king put you in that direction the blues journey direction yeah for sure and, um, you know, I could hear, like, I realized at that time that, you know, a lot of bands that I was listening to, like Led Zeppelin and Deep Purple and Black Sabbath and that kind of stuff, Cream, they were all influenced by blues. But, you know, I just, you know, found that blues is more, you know, kind of closer to me. I, I like it much more than rock stuff. So. So you were in Russia at that time. Was there, um, did you self-teach after that? Or did you find some local musicians that you could learn from? Yeah, at first I started just speaking by myself. And then I had my first guitar teacher when I was, I think, 13 years old as well. And uh, he was mainly a jazz guitar player, but he showed me like the basic blues, 12-bar blues chord progression. So yeah basically though that's my story great was it was it hard to find um this kind of music like when you were a kid and hard to dig a little deeper sort of past the classic rock uh you know sources yeah you know people like t-bone walker and bb king and gabe mouth brown and johnny guitar watson you know that all came later and i was just lucky because i met some people along the way who were into that kind of stuff and who introduced me to that kind of stuff. So, but that all happened a little bit later. So once you got to Helsinki, you started a band called the Firebugs. And I really like some of the Firebugs videos. <laughs> that was a fun, like retro blues band. Yeah. Um, tell us a Thank little bit you. about your, uh, um, how did you, how did you start the Firebugs or what, what's the story with that band? Right. So, after I moved to Helsinki, uh, maybe like a month later, I went to to uh, to a jam. There was like a you know blues and soul jam every Sunday at one club that doesn't exist anymore, unfortunately. And that's where I met the guys. That's where I met the the bass player and the the drummer. You know, I just asked them, you know, let's form a band. And then later on, we found a piano player but um i think at that time we played also a little bit of like rock and roll stuff and we had upright bass so yeah nowadays our 
music is a little bit different. It's more like 60s. Right. You're basically doing a 60s soul thing now. And um, you've got some really strong songs. And it looks like you, you've really been working on your singing. Like this is really kind of all about the singing and all about the songs. So congratulations on that. Yeah. Thank you, Johnny. Well, it's, it's great that, you know, that it's noticeable that I've been working on my vocals but because I haven't. And I think it's, it's really important. If you, if you have a band, the vocals is one of the most important things, but of course I love the blues and I love picking the guitar and I try to, you know, get better at that all the time. Well, it'll always be there. I mean, you know, you had a, a kind of a retro blues band and, and going in the soul direction I dig that song Star Child Blues. That's kind of like a, it's like a Fleetwood, the early Fleetwood Mac sound. You know? <laughs> well, I haven't thought about that actually, but yeah, I've always been a huge fan of Fleetwood Mac. And, uh, but I, I think at that time when I wrote it, I was listening to quite a lot of Ry Cooter. Really? Oh, okay. So, so maybe that's where the influence came from. I don't know. The slide textures. Right, yeah, yeah, and um, but yeah, like I said, I mean, I, I still love blues, and uh, you know, I I still try to write blues songs and um, you know, l learn new blues tunes all the time and stuff like that. It's not like I completely just went to into the no, this 60s is all stuff. No, this is just a, a side. Of, it's a side of what you do, and and right that, that kind of thing. And um, I see. So is Yaska. Prepula, is he, is he your bass player normally now? Yeah, that's right. And we started playing together not not very long time ago. I think it just happened just before the, the whole Corona thing started. And I just asked him to record some bass for our, you know, with us. So, yeah, after that, we started doing some shows, although there ha hasn't been so many of them <laughs> for obvious reasons. Yeah. Well, what's um, the response been to your shows? I mean, do, is this kind of like kind of retro soul thing? Is it, is that really popular where you are? A lot of people who never heard about this music wants to hear it. You, you know, they really dig it. Right. Do you, do you have fans that are kind of in your age group? Not so many, actually. <laughs> <laughs> you know, everybody says that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the older crowd <laughs> that's true but but uh it's really strange but i noticed i i don't go to russia very often nowadays but when i do i notice there's a lot of young people who come to see the blue shows like and much younger than me like in their early 20s and stuff like that so i find it very interesting well that gives me hope but you're probably gonna inspire some of them yes <laughs> I mean, you, you got the bug when you were very young. So, you know, people do get the blues bug and, and get inspired. But you were talking about writing songs. So I had a couple questions, you know, because my interest, yeah. I always like to ask musicians who write, do you think in your native language or do you always think in the context of English or do you translate or just write in English the first time? Well, I think a little bit of both actually, but probably I think in a context of English most of the time because, and actually I speak English more often than I speak my own language nowadays because, you know, I live in a foreign country and I don't speak Finnish that well. So that's, you know, the way for me to communicate with everyone. And I have a lot of friends from different countries. That we all speak English together. So, yeah, but there are some things because, uh, I like some of the Russian poetry and I like some of the, you know, sometimes I try to borrow some of the stuff from there and try to translate it to English. And, That's interesting because yeah. Russian is such a, a lovely sounding, rich language. And I always think about, you know, <laughs> well, it's some people find it harsh, but I, I find it interesting sounding. Tell me about your first recordings and your latest CD a little bit. We did quite a lot of recordings with this band before, but there was always some obstacles. And, uh, 
Yeah, we did some sessions and weren't maybe satisfied with our performance. And then it also happened that when we recorded at Tommy Leno's place, uh, he sold one of the tape machines so we, we couldn't use those tapes anymore. Oh, and so we had to <laughs> do some of that. Yeah, um, but yeah, I'm 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 really happy that finally we finished this record. It took a while. Yeah, but we we we've been playing together for for like nine years, and wow. we always recorded some stuff. Why do you call your band the Call Operators? Yeah, it's uh, <laughs> is it a weird name? It's, well. it's a little odd, you know. But, but <laughs> <laughs> tell us the story, you know. Yeah, we've run across <laughs> odd names, but that's fine. We just like to know the story behind it. Well, it's just named after a Floyd Dixon tune call oh. operator 210 yeah because we used to play this song for for many years yeah floyd dixon is like uh well you you probably know sure, jazz yeah. blues singer from from 40s so he has this call operator, and it's really hard to find a name that nobody used and that sounds good well i don't know if we found a name that sounds good but at least nobody it's fine used it it's before. fine but it's a it, i figured there had to be a story behind it because <laughs> It's a little intriguing. So, so now that you have this record out, I mean, I, there's a, I know there's kind of a whole Finnish, like there's people who are stars in, in Finland and only in Finland, you know, even like roots people. Are you going to really like kind of work on the Finnish side of things or how do you plan on marketing your record? Well, my ambition is to, you know, promote this record outside Finland because still Finland is a small country and there's, I don't know anyone who makes their living by playing blues only in, in Finland. Very few people. Uh, but um, if we could uh, promote this record like to Sweden and the rest of the Nordic countries and may maybe some other European countries, that would be great because there's a lot of potential out there, but it's quite hard. I guess, but um, I have some connections in Sweden because I, I played with a Swedish band and I did quite a lot of shows there. So I'll try to spread the, the word about the record there as well. So when you when you go to Sweden, so lots of times you'll travel by yourself and, and use, a, use like a... That's a, right. A, yeah, yeah, that's right. right. That's what a lot, that's what a lot of folks do. <laughs> it's actually yeah. fun, you know? Because you you sort of have a passport into into that scene that way. That's true. I I miss that stuff. You know, Th this whole thing with the you know it's my first record and you know a lot of the things I do for the first time and I have no idea to be honest how to like <laughs> just distribute it and how to promote the record and do like this whole business side of it. So. Well, I can help you there. <laughs> little bit can you um, wow thank you it's a tough problem of how do you get your work out there it i mean it's a tough problem for definitely everybody everywhere and there's just a few people who well the requirements for doing well like change a lot like what we right. two years ago it may, might not be the best strategy now i've had ups and downs in in the music business you know i've been kind of like the coolest thing and then i've been just like you know, yesterday's news, you know, it all it just goes <laughs> up and down. You know, this is your first record. The good thing about it is that you have really strong songs. You're singing, you're singing you. great. And uh and guitar you, playing. Yeah, and you have something to Thank say. You. So, you know, it will find an audience. It'll it'll sort of keep working for you. So much of it too is just relationships, you know. I right. mean, and, and that takes time, you know. It takes sure. time and it takes like some getting around, you know, for sure. For and sure. Uh, there's a lot of chicken and egg problems. Like, you know, it, it takes relationships to get around, but you have to get around to make relationships. <laughs> That's so true. Every, yeah. Everything's kind of a <laughs> catch 22. So, and and, and then I, I guess another sure. really hard question or the first thing to think about is like, how would you define like this record or this band? or your own career as a success, you know, what's a success to you? You know, it doesn't have to be like being as big as Joe Bonamassa, you know, 
<laughs> no, well, for me, it's uh, you know, if I if I'm able to play the music that I love, and at least play shows every every Friday and Saturday, you know, I I'm I'm happy with that, and if I'm able to play my original music, but yeah, I don't have like such big ambitions, but I. You know, I want to work as hard as possible and try to do my best. Well, I really like your songwriting. I like that song, uh, Mr. Murphy's Law. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. It's not my favorite one, but... Uh, oh, yeah? Yeah. Well, what are your favorites? Uh, I think Joker in the Pack, I'm pretty okay. pleased with that one. But uh, actually... That one was a collaboration of me, our ex bass player, and Mitya. And uh, one friend of mine, Scott Morgan, who's a, a really good guitar luthier. So we wrote the song together a very long time ago. But uh, yeah, I think that might be my favorite one. I mean, people can tell right away, like, there's a definite musical intelligence sort of like crafting these songs so you know just keep up the great work yeah, keep up the great work thank you so much guys yeah but it, it took very long time because all of these songs you know took years to write them and some tunes i wrote like years ago and then i you know didn't do anything with them and then started working on them later a couple of years later and stuff like that so, well i always I'm, appreciate original work and it is hard work people think uh it's so easy to sit down and write a blues song but it it's always hard to get the lyrics and the feeling to a song for sure especially lyrics i'm not really good at that stuff oh yeah but, you it's know. very fun clear, <laughs> clever lyrics, so that's great but it's it's also true that you know at least some of my favorite songs and some of the greatest songs are written like you know very quickly like uh dark end of the street by james carr i heard it was written like in, in half an hour by two guys in a hotel room you know what a great song sometimes the force of having a deadline you know you do it's just gotta happen and yeah. probably having somebody to bounce ideas off of too then it's like a conversation it's not just yourself yeah. in your mind you know that helps a lot, actually, if I have a writing partner. It's yeah. much easier for me that way. And uh, yeah, you mentioned, Johnny, that you're trying to write some songs right now. How, how's that going for your new record? I haven't started yet. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, Stephanie comes up with some phrases and then I'll say, that's a song. And then I just grab the back of an envelope and, yeah. you know, but my songs aren't Shakespeare, you know? Yeah, one of them was. They don't have to be. <laughs> <laughs> one, of, one of it was your charm won't help you. And that yeah. became a song. <laughs> right. that, that, that's a, that's a good hook actually. Yeah. But uh, maybe once you have a deadline, once yeah. you have a deadline, you know, it's going to happen. Yeah. Well, well, what, what kind of guitar are you playing there? Yeah. It's not the only guitar that I have, but uh, yeah, I've seen that one quite one. a few times there. It's a harmony. Uh, there's no logo, unfortunately. Yeah, it's Harmony Meteor H72 or something like that from There you go. There you go. 59, I guess, with goil foil pickups and stuff. It's really good and really versatile guitar, actually. Yeah, I like that. I like some of your guitar tones on this record. And and I know that um our the people who listen to this podcast are really gonna dig this record. So anything you'd like to say to your fans? To my fans. <laughs> I know you have fans. <laughs> You're going to get some now for sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I'd like to say thank you fans for all the support. <laughs> and, you know, that's one of the reasons why we musicians do this stuff. I mean, I would probably play music anyways if there wasn't anybody listening to me, but it's, it's nice great to, to have it's great to have people who enjoy what you do well good luck with your new album and we hope to meet up with you when we come to europe for sure and thank you so much guys for inviting me to your podcast and 
I have to say, Johnny, thank you so much for all the support and everything you've done for me. You always been very kind to me, and I really appreciate that. Oh, so, my pleasure. You. Keep up the great work. Thank you. All right, thank you guys. Constantine, Constantine Kovalev, Helsinki, Seoul. Okay. <laughs> all right, guys. Thank you so much. All right. Have thank a great you. day. This has been No Border Blues with Johnny Bergen and Stephanie Tice. 